Hello, everyone. Welcome to Couch Talk. It's Dr. Anna Kabeca, and I'm here with Eon Clark, who is the founder of Activation Products and Ocean Alive. So due to a series of life-threatening health issues that hit him all at once back in 2004, when he was 46 years old, he, Ian, refused to accept life's traditional circumstances and decided to pursue the natural methods of restoring perfect health. So after five intensive years of learning and doing exactly what it took to support his body's natural ability to heal itself, he set out to share this information and the definitive nutritional whole food products that changed his entire life. Ian has been traveling the globe, pulling together highest level scientific discoveries in the natural health realm. Uh, he is working with his five sons in the support of an entire team of innovators and activation products was birth and now has grown into a multi-million dollar manufacturing company producing the world's greatest health products available today. We can add Mighty Maka into that group list. <laughs> but the largest discovery that began almost eight years ago was Oceans Alive Marine Phytoplankton that has revolutionized the health of thousands of people around the world. So we'll talk about that and also the magnesium supplement that I've been using, which I really love, um, which is Ease. So uh, I've been using this spray. And so I wanted to bring Ian in to talk to all of you about something that we've seen clinically in my practice over the years through testing red blood cell magnesium, not your usual chemistry or serum magnesium level, but actually red blood cell magnesium. What we found, what I found in women, um, really who've been on birth control pills or in the menopause, perimenopause, suffering with anxiety, depression, muscle aches, et cetera, that either very low um, normal levels of red blood cell magnesium or significantly insufficient levels of, of red blood cell magnesium. So there's a difference here that is really important and, and we'll talk about testing. But uh, Ian, tell us a little bit about your journey and what has driven you so strongly along this field and your passion. So when I was 46 years old, which is 11 years ago, I ended up in a situation where all of the, the seeds that I'd sown were reaping. Uh, I, I, I always thought I was invincible. I did what everybody else around me did in society. I ate whatever I wanted. Didn't pay attention to really my health other than just, you know, thinking a little bit about it. And, and it hit the wall as, but as hard as you could with heart disease, liver disease. I had kidney problems. I had lesions on my body that were opening up. I had a massive infection with a fistula cyst. Needed all kinds of different surgical procedures and pharmaceutical drugs and various treatments from doctors that really woke me up and scared me very badly. And the thing that I noticed that in the process of all of leading up to that and having to face surgeries and so on, that none of the doctors could answer why I had these problems. They can only tell me the problems that I had and their solutions. And I, I just believed that somewhere it was something that I was doing, which it turned out to be everything that I was doing. It was entirely my responsibility for my problems. And they wanted to offer all these different high tech uh, medical solutions that I was not comfortable with at all. And I got turned off over the course of a few months by a few doctors. One of them was my oldest brother, unfortunately, who was an MD for 37 years, simply because of their assumptions. And I felt that they were more guessing at the cause than having any clue as to why. So I all I I woke up one day and I just realized that there was somebody and people more than just one person out there that really knew the truth about how to get the body to restore health rather than go through these medical procedures. Because I watched my two uncles when I was, I was at that time, 20 years old, 1978, they died two days apart, one of liver cancer, one of thyroid cancer. They followed the exact instructions of the medical doctors that were treating them and they landed in the casket right on schedule. And I just thought, you know, because mine were also life-threatening. I'm not going to discuss the intricate details because I think a lot of it was misdiagnosis. Uh, but nonetheless, it got to a place where I wanted to find out the cause and how to fix. I just knew that there were people in the natural health space out of the thousands of people that don't know or hundreds of thousands that don't know, there would be 10, you know, maybe that really knew. But I didn't know how to find them. I didn't know where they were. I just knew they were out there. So that when you're desperate, you 
pray. And so I prayed about this, asked for guidance and direction. You know, if I could find those people, I would do whatever I was told. I would spend whatever it took, energy, money, time, whatever. I would no longer discriminate. I was wide open. And I was open to how much I would have to suffer, how much fun I would have to have. It didn't matter. I was open to whatever it would be. And that took five years. So fortunately for me, I started finding the right people in a short enough time that I didn't exit on the, on the planned dates that the medical industry had for me. And I was able to completely avoid all surgery and all pharmaceuticals. Uh, first step was to clean up my diet, of course, start drinking good water, did a lot of juicing. But of course, that doesn't fix things. That only takes the load off that I've been putting on my system. And I went, I learned all about detoxing. I learned about it the hard way, but I know today is not the hard way. And I went through healing crises like crazy. I suffered um, way more than I ever dreamed possible. And I know how to avoid that suffering now. It would never be repeated. If I knew then what I know now, it would have taken six months to a year, not five years. And, but along the way, I got to meet all these amazing people. And I kept going, next level next level then i found out that it's not about going next level there's only two levels when it comes to health well-being or really anything in life is yeah. top level and everything underneath there's just two levels so if you can achieve top level then you would want to correct mm. so this is this was the goal so top level products top level protocols top level modalities and top level results and that's what we're all about so that's been what we've enjoyed and, it, and that's what we have to share with the world. Well, I think it's, it's amazing with what you've done and what you've shared and also um, the, you know, the angle that you've taken with it. And I think what you've said is a few things. Well, one is, you know, as physicians, what have we done as physicians to really promote our understanding of healing versus symptom care? And, and that's, that's key. A lot of what we're trained in medical school and in residency training is the, is the symptom care. Let's get them out feeling better the next day than they were. But unfortunately, putting Band-Aids on doesn't heal the underlying issues. So in functional medicine, integrative holistic medicine, which I now practice, is looking at the underlying, underlying issues which cause the imbalances in the first place. And your symptoms are just your body screaming for attention to fix these underlying balances, which aren't cured or fixed or addressed by NSAIDs, antacids, antibiotics, and the list goes on. So there's um, a, certainly a differentiation. There's a partnership that really needs to start uh, increasingly being integrated. And I've had great partnerships with uh, classical oncologist and endocrinologist, and I've had not so great partnerships with those fields. So it's important for the individual, like you said, to to really also um, not settle, look for congruence in are they feeling better, you know, versus are their numbers better in the instance of cholesterol, right? Your numbers are better, but are you feeling better? Have we added quality of life? And um, if you've been just prescribed a medicine and lifestyle hasn't changed, that's a really big indicator. So we want to um, address all those issues. And fortunately, when we fix these underlying issues, like with magnesium deficiency, which I'd love to talk about, we, uh, it, you know, three, over 300 processes affected in the body and we can really impact some positive transformation that way. But also what you said is top level, like in the formulation of a product, there, there are so many options out there. I always give the example, like for the formulation of olive oil, right? What is the best olive oil? Where has it been grown? How has the soil been taken care of? Did the caretaker love the trees, right? And what's the first cold press olive oil? All of the oil, all of everything is going to be used from that press, but what is the best of the best, right? And that's important. What's been sprayed on it? How's it been treated? How's it been grown? How's it been loved? And I believe those things make a difference too when we're formulating a healing regimen for our client as well. Yeah, definitely. Soil to seal is where we live. And, when, and looking at the medical industry was really interesting in my journey away from traditional allopathic, oh. right? Going into the naturopathic, some of the most advanced people that I found in the naturopathic world were actually MDs who had adopted different integrative things, had been opened up because they had, I love the medical industry because the medical industry saves 
millions of people's lives every year, but they're also responsible for millions of people's deaths. So you've got this two tiered thing because we all know that when somebody has something massively acute and they've got trauma or they've got whatever, I, we've never seen anything as, as responsive as the medical system at, at keeping that person alive is absolutely phenomenal. And my whole family is allopathic. So my oldest brother was a medical doctor. Unfortunately, he was programmed completely against, 100% against anything natural. Said it was snake oil, died at 61 of a brain tumor, listened to nothing, tried nothing, did exactly what the doctors told him once he got the brain tumor and passed away within three months. My oldest sister is married to a heart surgeon who does a lot of stent. He was one of the pioneers in it. He's now retired, he's 80 years old. He was throwing up blood in his, in his driveway at 73. We believed that he would have a miracle to get through that. He did. He's still alive today. Amazing. And now he does a lot of natural stuff. But it's just a matter of the mentality, right? Well, I think one thing is in, in, uh, with physicians, you know, ourselves, is that um, we have the benefit of a very expensive couple hundred thousand dollar medical education that's totally a blessing. However, the, the unfortunate thing is when we hang on to that education as the end all be all and, and not look outside of that. And we go into medicine to be healers, right? So we have to continue to learn and to heal and to grow. And, and there's so much in traditional medicine that's really inspiring. And I would say many of the physicians in functional medicine, integrative medicine, et cetera, that have the dual training are because of personal instances, either people they love that they've had to help and outside of the usual prescription pad and knife weren't able you know need to look for things outside of that to help them or they themselves has suffered with something as you as you yourself had with some without a um intent like without the uh, impression that this had a healing journey this was a life sentence versus a um kick in the butt, time to change your ways type thing. Let's get the right answers and, and the right things in place. I think that's so, that's so true. So we have to keep an open mind, as certainly as physicians, beyond what we've trained and um, look for answers. And in the field of functional medicine and, and so many colleagues in naturopathic medicine, colleagues um, so much smarter than me that are nutritionists and, and on and on. I mean, it really think food as medicine. So speaking of food as medicine, how do we now use magnesium um, as medicine or foods containing magnesium as well as medicine? Let's talk, let's start with magnesium deficiency. How yeah, so, does everyone know if they have magnesium deficiency? Well, to put that into a nutshell, the, the issue has been since the Second World War, the magnesium levels in foods have been dropping off. <clears throat> the requirement for magnesium has been increasing because of higher stress, higher productivity, higher requirements of our brain, which runs on magnesium primarily for a, a, a cofactor fuel. And these things are, are sort of going against each other. So. Magnesium supplementation came on you know, stream 15, 20 years ago, and there's some uh, good magnesium supplementation. Uh, that's, that's oral, very, very few. Uh, you're, you're familiar with the chelated magnesium, which is the only one really you should take. There's one for the brain, which is magnesium L3 and 8. I think that's also an excellent one. Uh, but it takes a while orally to put it in your system, you know, and you want to have a, as minimal amount of the oral consumption as you can because that's gonna tax your system through your kidneys every time you take it, which is fine. Your body can handle that tax. If you have kidney issues, then it can't handle that tax. Uh, then the geographical application of magnesium is, is a whole thing that we'll talk about in a sec. But going to the magnesium deficiency problem, most people can only really go by symptoms. You can check your blood for sure. 1% uh, of your magnesium in your body is gonna be resident in the blood. The rest of it's in the tissues and are flowing through wherever, you know, lymph system and, and so on. But you want to have a reserve on a daily basis because it doesn't hang around for a long time. Some magnesium just goes in and out like magnesium sulfate in a bath. That's not going to hold for any length of time. That'll give you temporary relief in the tub. But magnesium chloride hexahydrate will absorb into the skin transdermally and hold better within the system is fully utilizable. And people find magnesium deficiency symptoms coming up when they're already at stage three. 
So that's when you are, you're already behind the eight ball too far than you should be. So we want to be a stage zero. Stage one and stage two, you won't see any symptoms. You know, you're definitely going to be tapering down cognitively a little bit. You're definitely not going to be able to handle stress as well as you could. But pain, aches, headaches, heart palpitations start showing up around stage three. If you advance to stage four, that can be even life-threatening. So the idea is to get yourself at stage zero by simply making sure that you're gradually getting back to that stage zero by supplementation and, and making sure you're, you're not allowing your body to be locked into sympathetic stress for too long of a period because, as you know, stress is amazingly good for you. You need stress. That gets you to do things. That gets you in flight or fight when you need to be. But if stress advances to strain, now you've got a problem. So you want to go in and out of, with that autonomic nervous system, in and out of parasympathetic, sympathetic, and get into that flow, and then get yourself unlocked from sympathetic if you're locked in. And magnesium is a massive help and assist uh, materially to assist your body to not be locked in so badly. And there's some other things that we can share some other time, but getting that magnesium to go with the calcium, because we're way over calcified, uh, foods have too many cal- too much calcium, too much phosphorus, too many phosphates, and that throws an imbalance. So when you have too much of something, then it's going to cause you a reverse effect than you want. So with the overcalcification, the higher levels of, of requirement for productivity and the lack of magnesium in foods, and even most food magnesium is very low bioavailability, you can now supplement through the skin with all the technological advances on creating a transdermal magnesium product that goes in almost instantly and you can put it down in your ankle where you need it or on a muscle that's that's tight where you need it instead of waiting for the oral to finally get there after the body's using it all up wherever else so this is the discovery that was it took 20 years in development it really came on stream about eight years ago you know as far as people starting to find out about it and in that eight-year period, we've advanced it up to what you now see as Ease, which is the most advanced top-level magnesium product in the world. Well, let's talk about why we see that magnesium deficiency is so prevalent in our society today. Yeah, so the main, main reason it's so prevalent is because people aren't aware. They're just not aware. They don't even know at all that a, that a majority of like up to 300 different symptoms can come into your system from magnesium deficiency. One little tiny thing has a cascading effect, a domino effect upon your whole system, which can be so simply and easily fixed. So it really, it comes down to lack of knowledge, first of all. So people need to be educated about that they are magnesium deficient. They can tell by symptoms. They can look at their overall well-being. How well are they cognitively? How good is their memory? How deep do they sleep? Are they getting REM sleep? Because we know that REM is crucial because that's where you're processing all the trauma for the day. And so many people are are sleep deficient because of magnesium deficiency. They end up taking a sleeping pill that deletes REM and completely disallows them to process their trauma. So you want to exacerbate the problem, you know, hit the sleeping pills or, or, or get sleeping aids. Because you just want to be able to go naturally into the deepest sleep and have your crazy wild dreams and wake up in the morning a new person. Right. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's so true. So people will wonder, well, can I just eat um, through and get enough magnesium through my food? So how do you respond to that? Well, it's now known scientifically that the eat, the, first of all, magnesium is too low in the food and any magnesium is there is very low bioavailability, which means their ability to absorb and utilize that magnesium is very, very low when it's taken in orally because it's got to go through the whole digestive tract, gets filtered up by the kidneys. And even an oral supplement, the very best ones are 15 to 20%. Most are running eight to 9% and otherwise taxing the system with the fillers they put in with supplements. And, and the, and the companies are not concerned enough about purity as far as we are concerned. Our level of purity is 99.9 to the five decimal places of pure magnesium chloride hexahydrate. And it is processed using intellectual property methodology that allows that to then quickly go into your system and be used. 
This is not just like everybody else wants to sell a magnesium spray. Anybody can go out and buy magnesium chloride and melted water for pennies. And it's not going to go into your system. It's not going to be usable. It's going to sit on your skin. But when you absolutely source the totally purest structured magnesium chloride hexahydrate and process it correctly to the maximum absorption possible, then it is used fully by your body. And the results are seen by the person experientially because you can't fake magnesium repletion. And the word repletion, people are not familiar with, they should get familiar with. It's just the opposite of depletion. And when they are replete, they are gonna find amazing moods. They're gonna feel great. They're not gonna get the muscle cramps. They're not gonna have the stiff joints. And they're just gonna feel overall amazing within a short period of time. Right, and it's important, again, this is a lifestyle change, right? We wanna make uh, people aware that through supplementation is, is one part. And when we're supplementing, we want what's going to work and be the most natural supplement to our body, as well as, like you said, not taxing. And we have to remember detoxifying, alkalinizing, healthy oils, all those other things that come with it, as well as movement activity. We were designed for movement. So for all our listeners, um, I'm going to talk about this product ease for a second, which you guys never hear me talk about other products, but you know, as a, as a uh, manufacturer too of my own greens product, Mighty Maca, sourcing the highest level ingredients from sustainable sources, non-GMO, gluten-free, dairy-free. I mean, it's a job. It's, it is, it's intense and we really very, very careful about it. Plus what products are nutraceutical, you know, um, you know, very high nutraceutical purity. What's in the what's in the capsule that we're recommending? I've been at magnesium chelate um, and magnesium glycinate. You know, uh, I've recommended that our form of, of magnesium supplementation for a long time. And one thing I've had has been you know chronic PTSD, chronic stress, chronic insomnia, and magnesium insufficiency. And we met our our uh, I met your our colleague, our joint colleague VJ, and she said, "Oh well, you've got to." try Ian Clark's magnesium spray. And I'm like, okay, a spray is better than adding another pill to my regimen, but why should I try it? And she, you know, really has told me exactly what you're now thankfully telling the audience today about the purity and absorption of magnesium. I'm like, okay, well, I just started running again and I'm pretty sore. So I'll spray on my joints, spray on the back of my neck and, and spray it. Plus I did a pre and post red blood cell magnesium level. And what I found is, you know, my sleep level by hour has increased and that's been tremendous. And also definitely spraying it on my joints has also been tremendously beneficial. So I love that I don't have to take another pill and I can still, you know, enjoy, um, enjoy all my activities, et cetera, without any disregard, but it's giving me some uh, better night's sleep. And so I appreciate this. And for all of my sleepless, perimenopausal, menopausal women out there, this has been a, a fantastic form. And does it matter? Because I've been spraying it just theoretically. Okay, will it help me sleep better if I spray it on the back of my neck and uh, my chest? But is there any coordination with, with that as far as sleep? Is there a better place to spray it? And it absorbs well, nicely. It's not sticky. And those are other things, of course, smelly and all that stuff. It's really a very clean supplement, which is also important to especially women, but I know men too. Right. Yeah. So throughout the day for just, you know, if people feel a little bit anxious for no unknown, no known reason, or maybe they are under a, a bit of a stress and they want to relieve that, they just spray it in the upper chest area because it doesn't stay enclosed, doesn't have an, uh, any scent like you're saying. And they can put it in there. And even we do have a scented version for men and women, but it's so gentle and so subtle. You barely pick it up, but it's really nice. Uh, right. So the up that area. Now for sleep, back of the neck is great. That is a very good place to put it. Being a guy, you know, I, I just basically spray my abdomen because I've already gone through all of the areas of my body for many years as we were, you know, in the process of developing the product and getting it out there in its various forms. So in the morning, I put 30 sprays after a shower. At night, when I remember, because I'm a guy, I, and I'm so busy and I'm so tired at the end of the day, and I've always slept like a baby, I will spray it on when I remember. But people that don't sleep well, they always remember to put that on and they have amazing sleep. And that happens the first night. So 
uh, you know, with, with me, abdomen. And because I just need to get it into my system. Uh, but anywhere you put it, provided it's not irritating to you on a mucous membrane, uh, it's also, you can mist it right into your eyes. It's amazing. The unscented one, right into the eyes is fantastic to clean out, you know, to keep your eyes healthy and clean. And anyway, give that a try. It'll sting a little bit the first couple of times, nothing serious. Your eyes will water a bit. And then after that, it doesn't do that. It just feels great and refreshing. Hmm. So so many ways to use this and you of course you can put it in the bathtub and soak in it. it's great we have a deep soak version of that that you can pour into the tub and yeah. enjoy people love that one yeah we're sure any excuse to make a bat to stay in a bathtub yeah. longer i'll do that <laughs> yeah also you have a couple other the phytoplankton and the oil can you talk about those two things well, the phytoplankton is Oceans Alive. That, that's actually what launched the company nine years ago. And we slowly built that up and it's, you know, been a family business. We literally started the basement of our house and we always put all of the money back in all right up till today. And always, we, we always wanted to share the profits with the public to get that out to the people and kept simple lifestyles. We live in a farm and the phytoplankton was the thing that taught me about getting the broadest spectrum nutritional molecules known to man in the body and you only need a small amount so that's a functional foundational food that supports the entire life in the ocean produces up to 90 percent of the oxygen we breathe and constitutes more than 50 percent of the green growth of the planet and that went through iterations all the way up to where it is today we have oceans live 2.0 which completely trumped 1.0 it has two strains of phytoplankton that are dialed perfectly in for the human nutritional profile they are anti-GMO, so that they are genetically selected from an heirloom strain. So you put that in your body, that's the material nutritionally your body can use to repair damage from GMO. Because we all have eaten GMO foods, whether we liked it or not, without even knowing it. So there's a lot of damage that can cause DNA disruptions and so on. But this is a super brain food, super food for the nervous system. Every cell in your body loves it. So that's the phytoplankton product. So and do you then, just put that in water? Is there a secret way to make it taste good? Oh yeah, you, you make sure you make it taste good. And each person has its own palate. Some people say, oh, just put it straight in your mouth. I do not recommend that. This is an extremely concentrated ocean product, but it's not grown in the ocean. This is, this is harvested in a bioreactor using sunlight in a super pristine operation that grows it. So, but it's so strong. Uh, people, if people like coconut water, that's the very best. It just makes coconut water taste amazing. Or right. apple juice or tomato juice, pineapple juice, kiwi. There's different ones that people, but depending on, you just got to make sure. I just throw it in water because I love the taste of it. It's an acquired taste, but it's ocean. It's like ocean essence. And I just love that. My wife, no way, can't stand that. So, you know, she needs to put it in juice. So each person is an individual, and I really recommend they make sure that it's fun to take, enjoyable, tastes amazing. If it doesn't, they're doing something wrong. Right. Okay, well, good. I'm going to try it in coconut water. Now, what about the oil that you have? Well, we have an entire line of seed oils, and we have a special technology that comes out of Germany. It was developed over the last 15 years, and that is the ability to press a seed oil without damaging it at a molecular level. Because even cold press technology shears the molecule of the oil that causes it to swell up, causes it to be oxidized faster, and it does not stay stable. So we have a way to keep the oil stable and fully bioavailable and not damaged. So you can tell immediately from our oils to any oils out there, because it's color, smell, texture, taste, results. And that's where the people are going to discern the difference between our oils and anybody else's. Mm -hmm. The moment you taste our oils, you're immediately a connoisseur because it is totally top level. And yeah. I've tried all the oils. We've tried them all. Oils have benefit, but the worst thing you can put in your body is a damaged seed oil, right. especially when it's gone into rancidity. And so you're paying money to try to put something in your system that you're supposed to help you. And it's doing the opposite. That is a double, triple negative. That's so. Right. right. So responsibility. And of course, seed oil has got a bad rap because of that, because people were doing tests based on adulterated, damaged oils. No point in doing that. When you get the real oils, your body resonates. Each organ functions based upon a different nutritional profile. 
that each oil contains. And so the market looks at omega-369, we don't do that. We look at the oil as a carrier because that's what it is. You know, black cumin does this, coriander does that, flax does this, sunflower this, pumpkin that, and so on. So there's a whole list of all these oils that we are coming out with. We've already got on the market, several of them. And we get a steady stream of beautiful testimonials from people that enjoy it across the board. And it's been on the market for two years so far. So I've been trying your black cumin oil and um, can you use it on your body instead of take, taking it orally? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, black, not many of the oils you can put on your skin. So you've got amaranth, uh, the black cumin goes in the skin. Now people, when they take the black cumin, it's like pure medicine. So they, uh, they don't like it, it's irritating. And I was the same way when I first started taking it, but you do acquire a taste for it. But what I recommend to people are not against taking Manuka honey, when you mix Manuka honey with black cumin, it's amazing. And it gives you a tremendous result when you, when you mix with the Manuka. You can also blend. I, I actually just put it in my smoothies. You know, mm -hmm. I put all, a small amount of the oils in my smoothies in the morning down, down the hatch. Don't even right. notice it. So it is very important oil. That's one of our crucial oils is the, is the black cumin. Yeah, I've, been, I've liked the research on it and definitely determined to make it palatable. And, uh, but I wanted to know if I can use it on the skin, if that's something that we can use on the skin. So that's good to know. Um, it has so many benefits. Well, I appreciate it. So I know we're going to um, uh, provide a link for our listeners on our Couch Talk blog on where to get your products and um, to check out the ease formula, this magnesium formula that you've created and just encourage you great to see you here after your long journey and um, appreciate your time with us and our audience and keep up the high level excellent work and i look forward to collaborating with you more in the future yeah i appreciate all the work you're doing as well and your enthusiasm and you're one of the few at the very top level where you brought all the functional integrative things together and that's the very best in my books as far as you know the people that i love to interface with the most because there's a real huge amount of common sense that comes from going through that educational process, breaking free from the mold of being confined by that and opening up. It's all about being open, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's excited and enthused and, and then willing to share and teach at any expense, <laughs> you know, so that's where we're at as well. Very good. Well, thank you so much. It's great talking with you and appreciate all your wisdom. And yes, to all our you. You're welcome. All our Couch Talk listeners, we will see you. Don't forget, you can download this on our iTunes podcast, as well as on our blog at quebecahealth.com. Thank you.